Hello everyone and welcome to the very first photo review video here on the channel. My name is Frank and I'm a landscape photographer and in this video I'm going to be discussing, analysing and critiquing several photographs from various photographers whom I follow on Instagram. I'm going to be sharing my overall opinion and I'm going to be analysing each photograph. So uh, stay tuned and watch till the very end of this video. But for now, before we get into it, let's roll this intro. Very, very big thank you to those who to those photographers who have allowed me to show to exhibit their photographs in this video uh, it's it's been great talking to all of you over Instagram via direct message and I'd like to say thank you thank you very much for letting me critique your photographs and showcase them for my photographic audience cheers guys so without any further ado let's begin with uh, the first photographer his name is his name is Urs Hungenbühler. I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Also, Urs, if you're watching this, I do apologize. I have no idea how to pronounce your second, your, your surname. Now, straight away, I would say that Urs's Instagram is, I mean, he's clearly uh, nature. He's clearly into nature and predominantly wildlife. And that's pretty cool because I did some wildlife myself, but nowhere near to the standard, so I can already tell that Urs's portfolio is much, much uh, greater with wildlife photography, and he's got some very nice black and white work. But yeah, so this, so he's predominantly interested in nature photography and and wildlife, and I have to say that his bird photography is pretty spot on so far. And he does do some landscape photographs. This one in particular is actually very interesting because it was the one photograph that attracted me to his portfolio. And it's one of those, I guess, places you could say that I wanted to put on my bucket list, you know, go to the diamond, I think it's called the diamond beach, is it here? Yeah, the ice beach, here we go. And um, uh, yeah, and it's very, very nice. And what I like about this, that out of all of his other photographs is that this really stands out in his collection. The color is completely different to what he usually goes for. And it's a lot more vibrant, whereas his other work, if you can see just like a general overview of his portfolio, it's, I wouldn't say it's monotone, but I'd say that he keeps within a certain tonality. There's a certain range within his within his Instagram portfolio that you can already see. And um, and I like it because you he kind of, exper not experiments, he kind of sticks with the whole natural colors and he doesn't go too crazy into editing. Whereas, like I said, this photograph stands out for me because of that, because it has a certain vibrancy to it. I like the distance, I like the placement. It is a little bit, in my opinion, to the left of the image, move to the right a little bit, or he should have been positioned slightly differently because I would have liked it to have been centered a lot more. That is my overall critique of that image. I would have liked it to have been centered, also, I probably would have done a longer exposure time because I can see, I mean, this is me being nitpicky as a landscape photographer. I can see in the background, the ocean, the waves, which are very, very nice, but, and it's got that hint of yellow, which is lovely, but I would have loved it to have been a slightly longer exposure, even though it probably would have come out a little bit more overexposed that's something that I think could have been fixed in post. But aside from that, the colour, the consideration to colour is actually very, very nice in this picture. I do like the fact that he has the yellow, the purple and the blue. And, um, and I think it's exposed well. I think it is exposed well. And it's edited quite well as well. Right, moving on to photographer number two. And photographer number two is someone by the name of Hugo Val. Thank you very much, Hugo, for letting me view your work. And Hugo, search him up here on Instagram. Uh, oh, based in the Pyrenees, that's really cool, man. Hugo, I do remember viewing this image in particular on, I think it must have been a long exposure hashtag of some kind, and I loved it. I loved the overall darkness of this photograph. I loved the fact that it was done in portrait, and uh, I think I briefly commented on this picture. Something that I 
I think I actually lack is a little bit more diversity with landscapes. And Hugo nails that. Uh, Hugo does nail the diversity. And also, I think he's, I think he's very well-rounded. But I think I would love to see Hugo photograph very specific aspects of the landscape. Because one of the things that landscape photographers like myself, what we tend to do, is we get we sometimes get lost in the whole landscape. When we go to a landscape, we'll view it and we'll think, oh my God, I need to photograph the whole thing. Whereas this image, for example, that Hugo did is fantastic because I love I love to see more images like this because he's taken a very, very um, important aspect of what the landscape is and he's just focused on that and that's great. This is something that I, I would love to see a little bit more of. Um, a little bit underexposed in my opinion, I probably would have gone, um, I probably got, would have gone with a longer exposure time, but uh, still a very strong image. In this case, uh, Hugo has focused, he has focused in this case on the whole landscape, but like three quarters of the landscape is just the rock and it's really really cool because the composition is nailed the main subject is there and the lighting is perfect he's got the lighting really 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 well done and in this case the darkness works in his favor so these are the kinds of photographs that i think are really successful with hugo's portfolio and i think i'm not convinced with this image because of the cropping itself Aside from that, it is a good photograph. I'm not saying it is a, a bad photograph by any by any means whatsoever, but um, I can see why someone who's not a landscape photographer would look at that and think that is a good photograph. But if I'm being true, if I'm being true to landscape photography to myself as as like a professional, I'm being very nitpicky here. I'd say that this rock here in the corner is what does it for me. It's, it's cropping out of the rock there, and it's the ocean, it's just not, the lake, sorry, it's just not as, as deep as the sky is. I think you can tell when something has been overworked in a landscape photograph, and this has not. This is very, very true to probably what it looked like in camera when he first took it. And I love landscape photography that is like that sometimes, because sometimes it's not necessary to over-exaggerate the edit. And I'm not gonna lie, Hugo has a lot of edits which of course have been exaggerated, but they're not saturated to the point where they're off-putting. They're actually, they're pretty good. But photographs like this, like I said, photographs like this where it has hardly been touched, I like those. I like those because they're simple, they're not over complicated. Photographer number three. Photographer number three uh, is Samuel, this, uh, a photographer from Italy, and uh, he's a very friendly guy, he's an awesome landscape photographer, and he's been kind enough to actually send us two photographs to review, which kind of, um, the two photographs that took my interest that I'd like to talk about. And he's been kind enough to send us the two photographs via my Gmail account, which is awesome, so we don't have to actually go into his Instagram, we can review these slightly differently, which is what I'm gonna do right now. What I love about this image, or what I loved about it when I first saw it on his portfolio, was the fact that the rocks themselves are almost pale white, and I love that. I love the fact that this image doesn't have much going on in terms of color, but what it does have going for it is subtlety especially in the background and especially right there at the very very end you have these subtle like orange orange like mountain mountains it's just, it's just so subtle and it's so sharp as well it's not even it's not even faded into the background to the point where you can't distinguish the background from those uh, mountains you can actually see that those are things that stick out from the sky which is which is astonishing because it all of the background all of the sky itself is almost all orange so it's really really cool i love the fact that there are very few colors in this photograph but even though there are few colors they all complement the main subject which is this area of the rock the very top part here of the rock which is very important the next photograph in his collection <clears throat> is this one right here which he was also kind enough to share with us and this is very very nice however there is one thing that I do have to admit and that is that he the sky in this picture 
is not real. This guy in this picture, I think he mentioned in the email that it was um, that it was a uh, it was a sky taken from another photograph that he took, and he just basically worked it on top of this one. So the sky isn't the sky isn't real purely because the bottom part, the stones. He's done a very nice job to keep them also purple. Oh, oh, a slight purple like tinge, just like a slight purple tone. And that's really important. It's something that I think he's considered quite nicely because even though he's he's added the sky in post, um, he's considered the, the, the foreground, the stones on the floor, they have to somewhat not necessarily reflect the sky, but it has to match the tonality of the sky to some degree. And I think he's nailed that quite well. He's definitely exposed, I'm pretty sure this is the Colosseum, he's definitely exposed this building quite nicely to the point where the yellow highlights inside the arches aren't lost or um, overexposed. This is a very well exposed image. And I think that for me is where this image is a success. Right, the next image, the next image was taken by a photographer by the name of Matthew McGuire. Matthew, thank you very much. Um, and I really wanted to focus on one image in particular, which is this one that you'll see on screen right now. And uh, I found this photograph again, just by scrolling through the Instagram hashtags. And I liked the fact that this image was, um, was all about composition. It was all about the tones and it was all about getting something uh, really different and it just stuck out from his portfolio uh, incredibly well. If I'm being completely honest with you, he has, I'd say this is more of a beginner slash amateur um, for landscape photography. However, he has some very nice candid photographs that I did flick through. Um, that I did flick through yesterday, especially this one here of the horse. I think this is lovely. It works really, really nice. It's got this, you know, the whole idea of solitude and loneliness. This image is really, really beautiful. Basically, in my opinion, the beginnings of a very strong landscape portfolio or what could become a good landscape portfolio. His interests are of course in others, but we're gonna focus on this image in particular because what I like about this photograph, first and foremost, is the fact that he posted this one right here. He didn't post the full image. He didn't post that. And that's what I like about it. It's the fact that he considered, he considered portions of a landscape that were more important than others. And it's something that I think a lot of landscape photographers need to work with, including myself sometimes, is that we get too overworked. Sometimes we get too, I don't know, I guess you could say greedy, or I guess you could say like passionate about the whole landscape. And it's like, I need to post this entire thing. Whereas what Hugh, whereas what uh, Matthew, sorry, has done here is that he's considered the whole landscape, but he said, nope, I'm only going to put this part on Instagram first. And he's done it as a carousel. And I would actually agree with him in this case, in that he's posted this one first, and it's the correct one to post first. So well done, Matthew, for doing that. Well done for cropping it and well done for realizing it, realizing that that part of the image was more important than the others. Now, there is a critique here. And I would say that in this case, he should have paid a little bit more attention to what, what we'd said before, which is uh, the, the um, texture. I in post would have taken this image and I would have put the texture all the way down in order to get some really nice smooth skies because I can see quite a bit of grain. And, um, and that for me isn't as favorable in the image. I don't think it works that well. If he would have lowered the grain on this image, especially in the sky, not so much in the sea, but in the sky, this photograph I think would have worked much better because there is quite a lot of grain here, especially when you go down to the buildings and when you have the mist, the grain, you can see the mist starts to like, I wouldn't say it's a lovely addition. I think it's fantastic that he has the mist there, but it becomes more obvious. I would like to say and, uh, uh, thank you very much for sticking around until the end of this video. I would have loved to have reviewed 
uh, three more photographers. However, I didn't want to make this this video way too long, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a part two where I review uh, the next three photographers that I have in line. I will leave their Instagrams, their Instagram handles on the top right or left of this video, so check them out. But those three will be the next amongst others that I will review on part two of the video. But I, of course, I would like to say thank you so much for sticking around until the end, if you have. Uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, do check out my own Instagram. All social links will be left in the description below, as well as the social, as well as the Instagram handles, the links to the photographers that I have reviewed in this video. So do check them out and do support them as well. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, till the next one. Stay tuned, guys. Peace.